What is up, everyone? Welcome to Let's Play Devil May Cry. We took a look at the pinnacle of character action with Bayonetta 2, and now we're going to be looking back at the revolutionary roots of the genre with Devil May Cry 1. The first Devil May Cry game, and it came out back in 2001, and in my opinion, it still holds up really, really well. And we will be playing the HD version of the game from the HD collection, but that's enough talk for now. There will be plenty of time for that later. Let's start this up. Let's rock, baby. Oh, that's good. Unfortunately, the menus and FMVs in this version are still in 4x3. Uh, the gameplay, though, is uh, widescreen and it's slightly up -res. It's a pretty simple port job, the HD version is. Uh, it does collect the first three games, and it makes a few slight gameplay tweaks, which we'll talk about later. Millenniums ago, there was a war between the human world and the other, the underworld. But somebody from the underworld woke up to justice and stood up against this legion alone. His name was Sparta. Later, he quietly reigned the human world and continued to preserve harmony until his death. He became a legend. The legendary Dark Knight, Sparta. Devil May Cry. I'm sorry, we closed at nine. Again, no password. I can't seem to get any real business. Whoa, slow down, babe. Well, well, what do we have here? Nature calls? It's in the back. So. You must be the handyman who'll take any dirty job. Am I correct? Almost. I only take special jobs. If you know what I mean. You're the man who lost a mother and a brother to evil 20 years ago. The son of the legendary Dark Knight Sparta, Mr. Dante. Well, the way I figure it, in this business a lot of your kind comes around. And if I kill each one that comes, eventually I should hit the jackpot sooner or later. In that case, you should be used to this sort of thing. <laughs> Are you really the son of the legendary Dark Knight Sparta? Didn't your daddy teach you how to use a sword? Sword. <laughs> Time to go to work, guys. Even as a child, I had powers. There's demonic blood in me. What strength? You were the first one to know about my inventions. Looks like I'm getting closer. It seems that way, but I'm not your enemy. My name is Trish. I came here to seek your help, to put an end to the underworld. What? <sighs> 20 years ago, Mundus, the Emperor of the Underworld, resurrected. Mundus? Yes. 
His powers were sealed by Sparta. He's attempting to gain control of the human world once again. He has been preparing to open the gate on Malay Island. The castle is above this cliff. Come on, let's go! Huh! Alright, we're in there. So if you're brand new to Devil May Cry, that's fine. We're gonna be easing into this playthrough. Uh, right off the bat though, we got our first yellow orb. I think in the HD collection on normal, it actually starts you off with three, so... Should be up to four. And with a quick wall jump up here, we also get our first blue orb fragment of the game. So yellow orbs resurrect you when you die. Uh, kind of like Red Hot Shots and Bayonetta 1, with one key difference here. In Devil May Cry 1, if you die in a chapter, you either have to use a yellow orb to restart the checkpoint, or you've got to load a save if you don't have any yellow orbs, and restart from the beginning of the mission. It's very punishing and very unforgiving. And so, let's start our first mission up, Curse of the Bloody Puppets. Very quiet, brooding, moody atmosphere to start off. Very reminiscent of uh, Resident Evil. Red orbs are going to function as our currency. We need 45. There are 45 scattered around this room. But if I am a little bit precise with this jump, I'm good, yeah. There's a secret cache of red orbs up there on the lance of the statue. So I don't have to go around this opening room in the mansion or the castle to collect 45 red orbs to open a door. If I didn't mention it, the blue orb fragments are pretty much your health upgrade. So we already have half of our first health upgrade. We have a yellow orb, and we've collected more than enough red orbs to open this door over here. If you don't grab the cache of red orbs on the lance, you have to go around and collect uh, the 45 red orbs scattered around the room. Which is kind of a pain in the ass. I, ha I actually have an irrational hatred for that little mini collectathon in the beginning. Which why it's why I was so happy to find out that that cache of orbs exists. I reacted real violently to this when I uh, first played it as a kid. Because I came in here expecting, you know, real high octane action and then the game starts off with a collectathon. Not a great first impression. Reacted so bad to that, it's totally irrational. It's like the most painless one, two minutes of collecting orbs. It's so inoffensive. It's like a needle prick. Also, is it just me or do the orbs kind of look like the, uh, the, the bailets from Berserk? On this orb in here gives us four out of four blue orbs. There are five fragments in total. Uh, in the first mission of the game, and then it kind of, uh, it kind of peters out from there, winds down a little bit. It's a puppet that resembles the residents of the castle. Uh, so real quick, I should mention that this is not going to be a 100% playthrough. I'm going to wind up missing a ton of blue orb fragments and uh, secret missions, which are like Muspelimes or Alphimes if you're not familiar with Devil May Cry, but you know uh, a little bit more about Bayonetta. I'm gonna be missing a lot of stuff. This is definitely not gonna be a 100%. And we have our first enemies of the game. The iconic marionette enemies, who've already managed to land a hit on me. <laughs> That's fine. It's going to be a little bit sloppy. Just a tiny bit. They are the fodder enemies of the game. They can throw their blades at you. Um, their other dangerous attack, aside from their regular melee strikes, is that they can tie you up in string. But there are no strings on me. And then there are stronger variations of them called the Bloody Marys. And the immortal marionette accessory from Bayonetta is based around those enemies. If you look at the, the the accessory closely, you can actually see the resemblance. It's pretty cool. 
so we have a rusty key which will allow us to go into this blue door over on the left here and the missions here are generally going to be pretty short there are 23 in total I'm probably going to be going through them at a rate of about I would say probably three or four on average per episode so it's not going to be a terribly long playthrough and if I can find a way to get up onto the plane come on I know it's around here somewhere the ledge we have our fifth blue orb fragment and the final one for mission one and a quarter of our next health upgrade and if you come down onto the nose of the plane another secret cache of orbs now before we can go through the other door in the room we have to hit this seal which activates the elevator takes us down and then we are gonna have a gauntlet of marionettes to fight in order to unlock that door I mentioned that the atmosphere in this is uh, very Resident Evil-like. It even starts out in a mansion, quiet, tense, moody. Uh, that's because, as you might know, this has become common knowledge by now, I think. But I'll say it anyway. Devil May, Devil May Cry started out as Resident Evil 4. The bounty of good shit to come from Resident Evil 4 is practically endless. Uh, RE4 is just one of the best games ever, and it spawn it spawned another one of the best games ever in Devil May Cry, one of the best series ever, and kickstarted the amazing genre of character action games in the process. Basically, RE4 went through loads of iterations. One of the earliest iterations of RE4 followed a character named Tony, who later became Dante. And it was just, uh, it, it, at that point, it was straying too far from the survival horror roots of a Resident Evil game, so Shinji Mikami talked Capcom into turning it into a separate uh, independent game from Resident Evil 4, and Mikami stayed on board to finish out RE4, while Hideki Kamiya went on to direct the newly, te uh, the newly titled Devil May Cry. Yeah, the bounty of RE4 is endless. Uh, it's one of my favorite combos with the Force Edge. Yeah, the million stabs. Oop, tied up in strings. Uh, if you get caught up in the strings, nah, sometimes you can't get out of dodge quick enough even after you get out of them. Uh, you waggle the stick to uh, break free of the strings. Helm Breaker's so cool, too, or Helm Splitter. So we start off with Force Edge, which has a pretty decent variety of combos. It's nothing like the complexity and the, the crazy amount of variety you get in later Devil May Cry games, like 3 and 4. Um, but there is enough to, to really uh, keep your attention, keep you engaged as far as combos goes for the weapons. And plus you can buy some later on. Uh, so you start off with the Force Edge, and it's a pretty decent supply of combos. And... Your standard guns, the iconic Ebony and Ivory. But that's the end of the first mission. I told you they were short. B, not too bad. End of mission rankings uh, factor in the amount of orbs you collect during the mission and how fast you complete it. Unlike Bayonetta, which ranks you based on whether or not you did all of the verses in the chapter and uh, based on the damage taken, your combo score, and the time in each of those verses. Here it's just total amount of orbs you collect and the amount of time it takes you to complete the chapter. So something else you might be noticing is the style ranking up on the top of the screen. Right now it's at A for awesome. Uh, the stylish meter was actually, I believe it was invented uh, in Devil May Cry. It was a new feature uh, that was birthed in this game. And it's uh, the meter that rewards you for keeping your combos going. Oh, I forgot this blue orb fragment was in here. I knew there was something here. That statue is uh, your shop, basically. You can go buy consumables and new moves in mid-mission. Uh, the highest combo score or the highest style ranking is S 
If you don't vary your attacks up, it stops increasing as quickly, uh, so it rewards variety and aggression. If you get hit, you lose it flat out, uh, and it also drops off very, very quickly. It's quite different from Bayonetta, which is a lot more lenient with letting you keep a combo going. So you have to be, if you want a high style ranking, you have to be really aggressive and you have to not get hit. Uh, I believe the marionettes in this hallway will respawn indefinitely. So we're going to come along out here and take a look at Alistair. The sword pierced through the statue. I am Alistair. The weak shall give their heart and swear their eternal loyalty to me. That seems so good! And now we have Alistair. Uh, and you might notice there are now runes below my health bar. Those runes are my Devil Trigger runes. So, now that I have my first Devil Arm in Alistair, the Lightning Sword, I'll be able to act activate a Devil Trigger from now on. And when you do that, you use up your glowing runes, you go into a demon form, you deal more damage. Oh, wait, that's gonna have to wait, just got... My favorite gun of the game. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Second favorite gun of the game. Jump the gun a little bit. Ah, jump the gun. The shoddy. This thing is so fucking good. Uh, you can also make it fire a little bit faster than intended by doing something called shotgun twitching. Which is, uh, I believe the way it works is you strafe slightly as you pull it up to aim. And it skips some of the recovery animations. Really, really cool. And we have another rusty key. Unfortunately, we didn't keep the last rusty key with us. Uh, Devil Trigger. Back to that. Uh, you move faster, you take less damage, you regenerate health. You get access to a couple of unique special moves if you purchase, that, uh, purchase them from the shop. Uh, you're faster. Did I say you deal more damage already? If, if not, you do. Um, taunting will give you your runes back if you taunt near an enemy. And I'm trying to get up to another cache of orbs on top of this fountain. It's not cooperating. There we go. Lots of those hidden orbs around. Uh, and just attacking things will also fill up your uh, Devil Trigger gauge. Also, I forgot to mention this about Alistair back there. Dante being impaled by a sword is kind of a recurring thing in Devil May Cry, except in DMC2 because that game is hot garbage. That's not why it's hot garbage. It just happens to be. Um, yeah. Let's put Alistair and the shoddy to, to the test here. Oh, man. There is another gun coming up later on that if you're familiar with Devil May Cry, you know why I'm excited to get to that one, too. Uh, the hands that block the doors off, the, if you're close enough to them, they will hurt you. I want to say that the marionettes in this hallway are also going to re- nope. Music stopped. These ones are not respawning. This is where the guiding souls gather. Can't do anything with that just yet. So instead we'll come over and attack this little shrine. 
and that uncovers a hatch in the floor. That's not the end of the mission yet, right? Okay, yeah. No, you can never quite be sure. And in case this room doesn't look familiar, this is the library where we got the shotgun a couple minutes ago. Just a hidden passage behind the bookshelves. And we are introduced to our second enemy type of the game. These enemies are known as uh, Sin Scythes and Sin Scissors. They're uh, a little bit tougher to fight than marionettes, but the shotgun wastes them. If you're trying to fight them with melee, they can be kind of annoying because they can hold their scissors and scythes out to block your swings. Uh, you can parry them and knock their weapons away though and then that opens them that uh, that opens them up for a critical attack tripping over my words a little bit uh, but the shotgun makes sure work of those enemies the other thing that makes them a little bit annoying is that they can uh, phase through walls and they can stay stuck there for quite a while and just refuse to show themselves now that is the end of mission two eh, another B not too bad and I think we will squeeze one more mission in before the end of the first episode of Let's Play Devil May Cry, Mission 3, Destroyer of Ardor. Uh, but before we do that, I'm going to get my first stinger and can't get air raid yet. I think I want to grab air raid and then air hike after my next stinger upgrade. And then we'll also keep grabbing uh, uh, purple orbs for... A, for a consistent Devil Trigger upgrade, so Devil Trigger can last longer, and we'll be good to go. So this is what we're going to need uh, for that lion statue back in the fountain room, but it's protected by a force field. So we can't get to it just yet, but it did open a path forward for us to go down. I believe there's a blue orb up here. It's a hidden cache of reds. I swear there's a blue orb up there. Ah, uh, maybe I'm crazy. Nope, I'm crazy. Okay. I could have sworn there's a blue orb up there. I know there's a blue orb uh, across this bridge if you backtrack uh, to it after we're done here. Also, I'm not going to grab any of those red orbs because I think they grow uh, the next time you come back here. They grow into a hundred red orbs each. Receive the pride of the lion. I got to cross back over the bridge that we just came from and we'll face some kind of trial. Which apparently involves getting struck by lightning. And we fall into the hot sargassum. Where we're slowly drowning or being scalded or something. And this is the trial. We have to face down a ring of sargassos who are fucking nothing. It's the only way I can think to describe these enemies. They are nothing enemies, and they drop a bunch of health for you to negate the fact that you were just taking a whole bunch of constant damage underwater. Not much of a trial. If you uh, want to do some platforming, I'm going to check up here one more time. If you want to do some platforming, which I don't want to do, you can go grab a blue orb. Um, if you cross the broken floating pieces of the ledge back to uh, that little glowing portal spot. But the platforming in this is pretty shitty. I don't want to do too much of it. <laughs> Got the pride of a lion.
namesake, you got something inside that big body of yours. Phantom time! Our first boss of the game is against uh, Phantom, everyone's favorite mascot for Devil May Cry. Oh no. Big shit talking spider made out of rock and lava. Spider scorpion. Uh, so he can spit fireballs at you, which can be kind of hard to dodge sometimes. He can make pillars of lava appear underneath you. I believe they come in uh, three pairs of. Well, three pairs. Three pairs of two. Um. For the most part, though, this is gonna be pretty quick and dirty. He's only vulnerable uh, on his thorax and in his face. Trying not to get caught by another fireball. Fireball. You can also, I believe, you can reflect those fireballs back at him, just not in a really good position to do so. Uh, you can also jump up on his back and slash away at him, get a couple good slashes in. And that's it for Phantom. At least for now. With Phantom defeated, that's going to mark the end of Mission 3 already. And that's going to do it for now. Hope you're enjoying Let's Play Devil May Cry. Thanks for watching, everyone. Take it easy. Have a good one.